So this is a video I've actually been meaning to make for a little while now. As you may have noticed from a lot of the guitars that I tend to review and demo on my channel, most of them have floating trims. Now in terms of the guitars that I've owned over the years, most of them have had floating trims. I've had a few hard tails here and there, but generally speaking I tend to lean towards the floating trim. I actually have uh, various reasons as to why I enjoy a floating trim over a hard tail, but I think if you spend enough time on an internet forum or go through some YouTube comments, you'll start to see the old debate of trim versus hard tail. Now trims and hard tails both have their advantages and disadvantages when it comes to playing, recording, or whatever sort of scenario you'll find yourself playing guitar in. Personally, I spend most of my time at home recording, so it makes a bit more sense for me to have a locking system. The main reason for this is that it's easier for me to lock the strings down, fine tune them using the fine tuners, and just keep everything consistent. There's nothing worse than recording a song where in between every single take you've got to retune the guitar because the G string's gone out of tune or whatever. Now in terms of the disadvantages of having a floating trim, they definitely take longer to tune. It's that simple. Um, Restringing it, it can be a pain as well. For myself, I've been using floating trims for about 11 years now, probably longer. And as a result of that, I've actually become more accustomed to how to tune a trim, how to set one up, how to adjust the intonation, so on and so forth. A fixed bridge, on the other hand, is easier to restring, it's easier to tune up. To some extent, it's actually easier to set the intonation on, especially if you have a look at something like a Tunematic or a hip shot. Going back to the reviews that I did on the FR series, the Gibraltar 2 bridges on those as well were fantastic to work with, restringing them, getting the intonation just right. I actually had one of those on the RGAIX as well, so I'll include a link to that video in the description, and feel free to check that out and see what the bridge looks like. The problem I have with with hard tails is twofold really. First of all, if you're using one without locking tuners on the headstock, you'll have to wrap and wind the strings around the tuners. Personally, I prefer locking tuners on any guitar. It just makes it easier. You pull the string through, twist it, bump, you're done. The only time I might actually wrap around a little bit more on a locking tuner is if I want to experiment with different tunings and I have to adjust the intonation. Now one of the things you might do if you have a floating trem and you're getting sick of it constantly moving, dipping here and there, you're finding it difficult to try out in different tunings, maybe you want to go from standard one day to drop D the next. One of the things that you can do to remedy that is actually block it off. Now there are a bunch of different methods of doing this, various companies actually produce parts that you can screw into the back of the guitar and stop that floating bridge from moving. Personally, I don't like screwing into my guitar, modifying it in that sort of way, unless maybe I've got a Damasio pickup in there with Damasio routing, I want to change it out for an EMG, then I've got to get it routed by a professional. That's the only sort of circumstance that I would be happy with modifying my guitar. So what I set out to do was try and find a easy, cost-effective, uh, non-destructive way of blocking off my floating trims. Most people will tell you get a 9 volt battery or a block of wood and use that to block off the trim. Generally speaking, that's a one size fits all and it will work for anyone and it will work for the majority of guitars. Luckily for myself, my dad's a carpenter, so he introduced me to these cool little things called flat packers. What they essentially are are just little plastic strips, different lengths, different thicknesses and you can layer them in a way that fills up most gaps. Maybe you've got a table that's rocking slightly because one of the legs is two mil shorter than the other. In that sort of case, you'd go ahead and you'd get a two mil thick flat packer, put it underneath that leg, cut it to size so you can't really see it and you'll stop the table from rocking. In my case, these were perfect for packing in the back of my guitar to stop that bridge from moving. All you have to do is take them out of the bag, start packing up the back of the guitar in between the wood of the guitar and the sustain block until the bridge doesn't move anymore. Once you've figured out how many you need, what thickness is, you just cut them down to size so that you can put the back plate back on the guitar and essentially hide away the work that you've done. Now I suppose the biggest question one would ask is what's the point, why go through any effort at all? A floating trim is supposed to stay in tune all the time, why worry about it? In my opinion, there are a few different answers to that question. First of all, maybe you're not the type of guitarist that enjoys doing all the crazy things that you can do on a whammy bar. Dive bombs, flutters, those sorts of techniques. If you don't incorporate those techniques into your music, personally, I don't see why someone like you should have to put up with the hassle of getting the bridge level, the effort of restringing it, keeping the bridge level, 
adjusting spring tensions and all that sort of stuff. The second reason would be tuning stability. I would actually point you in the direction of guitars like my RGA8 and the guitars used by the guys in Meshuggah. Their guitars essentially have floating trims bolted onto the top of the body of the guitar. When it comes to restringing your guitar and locking everything down, it operates exactly the same as a floating trim. The only difference is that you don't have to worry about adjusting spring tensions and worrying about the trim being all unlevel and all over the place. So what I've done is I've taken two of my guitars my RG7 Premium and my 2007 S Series and I've blocked those off and I'll show you what that looks like now. You'll see that with the RG7 I've only packed one side of the sustain block and I've actually used the tension from the strings once tuned to hold the whole thing in place. On the S Series I've shown you a different way of doing it where you actually block both sides of the sustain block. I've yet to notice any real difference doing it that way but I just wanted to show you two different methods of doing it. Now here I've got my RG6 Premium. This guitar has yet to be blacked off and I'm going to walk you through how I'll do that now. So the first thing you should notice, apart from how gorgeous this guitar is, is that the bridge is completely level. So I've actually set it up properly as you would a normal trim. The bridge is level, the string height is adjusted, the intonation's all there. What I'm going to do is I'll turn the guitar around to reveal the back plate. The first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the back plate. like so. I'll move the camera in a bit closer just so you can get a better view. And there we go. So the area that we're going to be looking at is actually this part here. That's the part that we want to fill to ensure the trem doesn't move. So I've got a load of old um, flat packers that I've used on previous guitars and we're going to start putting them in there and seeing how many do we need to essentially fill it up and get it to stop moving. So I'll start off with the three thickest ones to see how they do. And they actually fit in there pretty tightly at the moment. So I'm going to get them in there so they don't move too much. That looks about right to be honest. Turn the guitar over. You can see that the bridge is still level. They haven't moved the bridge in any way. Tuning is unfortunately affected, but again, we're going to hardtail it, so that's going to be easy to remedy, isn't it? So. Shit. So it looks as though these two are going to fit in there with no problem. And by no problem, I mean the back plate's going to fit on. It's not going to bow out, anything like that. This one, on the other hand, simply put, it's too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some items that you probably have around the house while you defend your postcode. I'm going to cut it down to size. I actually tend to use these lines as markers. So as you see, I'm looking at about two or three mil away from that line. So all I'm going to do is just saw that down. So now I've got the three of them all down to size. So what I'm going to do for a tiny bit extra security I suppose is I'm going to sellotape these three together. So the tape wrapped around it is actually going to add a little bit to the thickness and I'm literally just going to slide it in. And there you go, as you can see it's in there nice and tight. A little bit of movement, only for putting enough force. What we're going to do next is we're going to loosen these so that's going to force the sustain block to push up more against that. The convenient thing about the ZPS system is that I don't need to take a screwdriver to it, I just need to turn this knob. So for a quick summary of what's happening here, the tension of the strings being tuned is actually forcing this part of the bridge to want to move up towards the headstock. However, now that we've blocked it off, these three pieces of flat packers aren't going to let that happen. In theory, it's similar to the way that a floating trim works. Floating trims are all based on string tension versus spring tension. We're using that exact same philosophy, but we're introducing this to the system to stop it from moving as opposed to allowing it to move. Turn it back around. Normally, with a floating trim, you should be able to move it. This thing's moving maybe half a mil at most. 
I'd say most people aren't even going to be able to notice that. In the grand scheme of things, is it going to make a difference? I don't think so. Maybe the first time tuning it up, you'll notice that you have to go through the usual steps that you would take with a regular floating trim, but after that, meh. So all we have to do now is tune it up, plug it in, and it's ready to play. So this was admittedly a bit more of a talking based video today. It's not usually the format that I do, but it's something that I want to look into. So make sure to put your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know, should I carry on doing this type of video? Should I not? Is my voice as boring as my mother and my wife tells me it is? Or maybe you found it informative and you just wanted to let me know. A big shout out to a Titan Aditi for letting me using their single disquietude in the background of this video. I've left the link to that in the description so make sure you go and check them out. And be sure to comment on their video letting them know that I sent you there. I hope you've checked out my playthrough of the new AZ series. Great line of guitars and that video is actually doing a lot better than I expected it to. And word from Ibanez is that series of guitars is actually doing really well so make sure you go and check one out. My next guitar playthrough video is going to be the new RGD IM6 FM which is a multi-scale six string i loved my time with it and guarantee as soon as it hits shelves i'm going to be getting one myself and doing the full in-depth review and i'll definitely be keeping my fingers crossed for a seven string version for those of you that don't know it's a six string multi-scale guitar i believe it's from 25 and a half to 26 and a half inches it's got an ash body ebony fretboard maple and purple heart neck goto locking tuners and of course the fishman fluence modern humbuckers which is probably the most hyped line of pickups in years from any manufacturer so yeah, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've got notifications turned on, and you'll know when that video goes live. Until then, I'll see you next time.